So here's an interesting question I get asked a lot of the time. How can I tell if my coffee is good? And whilst that might seem obvious, a lot of people will say good coffee tastes good. Sometimes it isn't as obvious as it seems. And so we're gonna look at all the different factors that help you understand how to tell good coffee from bad quality coffee. I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer. Let's take a look at how can I tell if my coffee is good. A lot of you are saying, well, it's really easy, right? Good coffee tastes good. It isn't always that obvious. Sometimes you haven't even had a chance to try the coffee yet. And while you're making your purchase online, what are the things to look for to know that you're purchasing quality coffee? The other things are that everybody has a subjective palate. So some people love chocolates, other people don't like chocolates. Some people like that strong bitter taste that we associate with coffee from traditional times. But other people like the sweet, nuanced, balanced flavors of coffee. So you can't really tell just from your own palate if you've got good quality coffee or not, or whether it's just what you like to drink. So I'm gonna explain Firstly, let's take a look at how to buy coffee online. And if you wanna dive deep into that, I have a video based on all the things to look out for online. We're gonna glance at a couple of things to help you understand how to buy good quality coffee. So, it is possible for you to buy great quality coffee and have it taste horrible to your palate. Take for instance, this Yoga Chef coffee. It is a super high quality score, 89, and if you understand about quality scores of coffee, 100 is the best you can get, which we haven't yet reached, and it's an exponential scale going right down to zero. So it's a lot harder to get from 50 to 80 than it is to get from 20 to 50. This particular Yoga Chef is such a delicious, intense, citrusy and fruity flavor. Fantastic as a long black just really gives out those intense flavors. But add some milk to it and you wash out a lot of that citrus flavors and it sometimes tastes a little bit like your milk is turned. In fact, my wife does not like any Ethiopian coffees, natural coffees on her milk drinks for that exact reason because it has a certain smell to her which reminds her of curdled milk or adding juices into your milk, which she doesn't like. Now, when I drink it, I understand what the flavors that I'm looking for and I do enjoy this as a milk base, but it's subjective. And so there's an example right there of quality coffee that doesn't taste good with how my wife likes to drink it. So while the Yoga Chef coffee might not be for everyone's liking, I particularly love it and it's a favorite of many, many people that I know because of those intense citrus and fruity flavors. But if you know you don't really drink black coffee and you know you don't really love that fruitiness in your coffee, you prefer like a chocolate flavor or maybe a caramel, then stay away from any coffees that mention things like blackberry or intense citrus. Those sort of flavors where there's lots of fruits in there, and I'm not talking so much about stone fruits, but certainly when you're talking about other tropical fruits, like mangoes, papayas, any of the berries, they're always gonna be quite intense, and so they might not work well on all of your drinks if you're drinking them with milk. So if you are a milk drinker, look for chocolates, rich chocolates, caramels, toffees. You can look for apricots and stone fruits. They work really well on milk, but stay away from the citrus flavors. Now, if you're looking online, you will also notice other flavors like aniseed and clove and other spices. When you see those particular flavors, often they are to do with lower quality coffees because spices and savory notes aren't really the sort of flavors that you're necessarily looking for in your coffee, especially now that we understand how sweet coffee can be. So when you see words like strong, intensity is 10, the bars right up to the top, that is an indication that they've used a lower quality coffee and they have had to roast it a lot darker. Now often it, you won't always see a roast type on here. Anything darker than a medium like full city or going into those really really dark roasts they tend to be left for low quality beans because with a higher quality beans you actually want to light roast it or medium roast it so you can get some of those rich and complex nuanced flavors out of the coffee. The longer you roast your coffee the darker you roast it you're just going to end up with that really full-on roasty type flavor which is the coffee flavor but not necessarily that sweetness at all so look for words that are sort of balanced medium more sort of sweet 
Don't necessarily go out and buy a strong intensity, full on intensity, and especially stay away from aniseed and clove because they're not really desirable flavors in your coffee. There's another term that you need to understand if you're ordering online and you drink your coffee in a certain way. If you're having it with milk, pay attention to the processing. Now, this is not common on a lot of the supermarket websites or any of the cheaper grade websites. They won't show this information as readily available as, as say we do. You see here, this is a natural process. There's natural, there's honey, there's unwashed, there's lots of different styles of processing. The one that you want to look for if you're a milk drinker is washed processing. So washed means they take all the mucilage off before they dry it out. And that gives it a very clean, very balanced acidity, and it's perfect for translating into a milk coffee. If you look at your process and it says it's natural, or honey, or carbonic maceration, or any sort of weird fermentation process in there, that is one that you want to avoid unless you're drinking it as a pour over, or you're drinking it as a long black or a short black. Because the moment you add milk to those drinks, it completely changes the flavor, and often you will not be expecting the sort of flavors that it gets, and you will associate that with a bad coffee. Doesn't mean that coffee's bad. In fact, some of the best coffees are natural or honey wash, but they don't always translate to milk drinks. So just understanding the process can really help you make less bad decisions when you're purchasing your coffee online. And if you wanna learn more about processing, you can dive deep into the video that I've done, the different processes used in coffee. It's a really interesting video and I highly recommend it to anyone wanting to understand more about coffee. The easiest and most simple way of working out whether your coffee is good when you're purchasing online, there's one word and that is price. Price is by far the easiest way to tell how good the quality of your coffee is. Yes, I know there are people out there who will always try to oversell bad quality products. It happens in every market around the world, but generally speaking, the higher the quality of coffee, the more expensive it's going to be. So if you're looking at supermarket pricing of coffee, then that is generally bad quality coffee because not many supermarkets will actually sell the higher quality coffees. There are a few that do, but you can tell them because they're not $20 a kilo, they're $60 a kilo. So if you're in Australia and you're spending $60 plus on coffee per kilo, then that generally says that that's a good quality coffee. And you need to look at the other factors to say whether you're gonna like it or not, but generally speaking, that is the good quality coffee. Anyone who's selling coffee for an expensive amount and they're selling bad quality coffee aren't gonna be in business for very long because most people work out very quickly that that's not worth the price. But if you're selling expensive coffee, then people will keep coming back. But generally speaking, a good quality coffee just costs more. It costs more to produce, it costs more to process, and it costs more to get over the other side of the country because there's less of it being moved around. So you can generally guarantee that a higher cost coffee will be the best tasting coffee that you can get. Now let's say you bought some of that expensive coffee, you got it home, you tried it, and it tasted horrible. Well, let's assume that it is good quality coffee to begin with and that someone hasn't repackaged some bad coffee and tried to dupe you. Then we need to look at what are the flavors that you're picking up in your coffee that you don't like. So for instance, let's take the Yoga Chef coffee again because this is quite a divisive coffee. As I said, when I drink it, I love all of those beautiful citrus tastes. And when you add milk, I can see how it changes to a more vanilla sort of flavor. And it is a very light coffee in terms of it's not a punch in the face. So which a lot of people like, but it is still a really lovely coffee. Now, my wife, she just tastes off milk. Does that mean that the coffee is bad or does it just mean it doesn't appeal to her palate? Well, I know the coffee isn't bad because I supply it myself. My wife knows enough about coffee from me to understand that it's not the coffee, it's just her palate. And she needs to avoid anything that says citrus when she's drinking coffee. But what are you experiencing at home with your coffee that you thought was good quality coffee that you now realize you don't like? If it's got a fruity, sort of a weird flavor in the milk and it smells like the milk might be off or something like that, 
then that's probably the processing of the coffee. And look at the process. Does it say natural? Does it say honey? Something like that. That's, you can tell, okay, well that's where that flavor's coming from. If it's smooth and light, but what you are wanting is that real rich, strong coffee flavor, then that's just something to do with modern age coffee. Because modern age coffee doesn't have that bitter, burnt flavor that we used to from the last 80 to 100 years. It's a sweet, nuanced flavor. It's very, very smooth and mild in milk. So what you're looking at is Arabica, the species of coffee, and what you're thinking in your head coffee should taste like is Robusta. Robusta is a cheaper, lower quality coffee, but that was the majority of coffee sold for the last 100 years. Most people growing up since the 30s will know that Robusta coffee is the coffee that they expect in every drink. And it's just that you have to shift your expectations now because Arabica is becoming so much more popular. Most coffees are made on Arabica beans and not Robusta. So that's something to look out for if you want to get that strong punch in the face, kick in the teeth sort of drink. Because some people like that and coffee is for everyone. Now let's say you've got your high quality coffee but it's still tasting sour when you drink it. Then you look at your extraction because if it's sour, it's not the beans, unless they are light roasted and not medium roasted, they won't taste sour. If you under extract your coffee, which means you haven't had enough time to extract all those lovely oils, that will also give you a sour taste. But that's the way that you've made your coffee and again, not the beans itself. So if you're tasting a sour or grassy or herbaceous sort of flavor, check your extraction, have a look at my video on how to make coffee, and then see if your coffee extraction looks the same or if it's gushing out really fast. And if you want to dive deeper into bitter, burnt, sour, I've done a video on that too. But if you're tasting bitter or burnt flavors, then I would say you're either over extracting it or you have bought low quality coffee because even the highest quality coffee will never taste bitter and burnt unless you've allowed it to drip, 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 drip for hours through your porta filter when you're making an espresso. Now flavors are definitely something to look out for when buying your coffee and making sure that the flavors match up with the ones that you like. You have to remember though that coffee still is coffee. It's like wine, it doesn't just change because the name of the flavor they put on front of it. It's still gonna taste like coffee, but it's reminiscent of that flavor. And if your palate's really good at detecting those flavors, you're going to be able to identify them a lot easier. But if you haven't done any work on conditioning your palate to be able to identify these coffee flavors, then don't expect to be able to taste anything more than the broad flavors of coffee, chocolate, and caramel. Basically, they're the ones that you'll pick up first, but the ones that are more subtle and nuanced can either be marketing hype or can be just things that you can't detect because your palate hasn't adjusted yet. I have to tell you this story about a couple of Father's Day ago when we created this rum distilled barrel coffee and it was so delicious when you knew that it had been sitting in a rum barrel and collecting some of the flavors from the oak rum barrels in the distillery. So all of the coffees that I tasted, I could taste clearly this beautiful rum undertone and it was fantastic. Even on milk, you still got it through, although it definitely was a black coffee. We ran it here through the cafe on Father's Day. The next day, we had hundreds of complaints. Really nice people coming in and telling us that, I think your milk was off yesterday or there was something wrong with the coffee yesterday. It was a mistake that we made when we didn't tell every single customer that this particular coffee they were drinking today is not the normal one, not the caramel flavors of Il Caramello, but the rum distilled barrel coffee. And that really did damage the reputation reputation for a little while we had to give away a lot of free coffees to people to make it up because people didn't know and associate the flavor with that rum barrel and they thought there was something wrong with the milk. So it's great to understand what people are experiencing because obviously I live in a bit of a bubble where I get to experience all this great coffee from around the world all day, every day, but I don't get to go back in time to when my palate hadn't adjusted and experience coffees the way that a lot of consumers would. It was great insight for me to understand and which is why I'm doing this video now is to help people like yourself at home understand what good coffee tastes like and what bad coffee tastes like so that you can discern the difference between what is low quality coffee and what is high quality coffee that you just don't like. And that is fine. My dad loves the dark, 
roasted, super bitter, super over extracted coffee. It's what he's grown up on, but that's not what I like to drink. And most modern drinkers don't enjoy drinking bitter coffee. But if you do, that is totally fine. It's just if you buy good quality coffee or expensive coffee and you still think it tastes bad, it generally is a user error or just an underdeveloped palate. And that's not bad either. It's just that understanding that that coffee isn't terrible, it's just not for you. So thanks for watching. I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer, and if you want to buy some of this delicious, gorgeous tasting coffee, you can jump online at www.coffeebeansdelivered.com.au, and you can also look up our online courses there, and where we dive deep into how to make the perfect espresso for you at your home with your equipment. As a quick reminder, if you like this content, please give me a thumbs up, and a subscribe would be great. Leave a comment if you have a question in the comment section below. Otherwise, as always, enjoy your brew.